Welcome to my computer screen. Uh, fully funded scholarships in Canada with the Canadian Government Scholarship 2023 and 2024. Every year, the Canadian government is launching the uh, exciting opportunity for international students to pursue their education in Canada. Uh, so in this video, I will explain the eligibility criteria of this uh, uh, government uh, scholarship uh, sponsored by the, the Canadian government. Uh, scholarship value on the duration, I will explain uh, the total duration the, the students can get the benefit from these Canadian government scholarships. What is the application process? Uh, you have to create an account on different portals. So I will explain all the links are available in the description below. So you can also get the information by clicking these links in the description. I will explain the application instructions. Then we will talk about what supporting documents you need. The students has to prepare many different documents for this scholarship. Uh, then what is the deadline, the key dates, uh, what is the deadline and when the Canadian government will announce or contact the successful candidates. Then we will talk about the student arrival in Canada. Then we will talk about the conditions for successful candidates. And finally, I will also provide the contact information if you want to get the further information of these Canadian government scholarships, you can send an email or you can also call to their uh, representative or uh, responsible person who is taking in charge of the Canadian government scholarship. So without wasting your time, so let's go to the eligibility part. The section number one is the eligibility. Uh, to be eligible, you must be the citizen of eligible country or territory. Asia from Asia, Bangladesh, the students from Bangladesh, Nepal and Taiwan. From Europe, there are only two countries are eligible from Turkey and Ukraine from Middle East and the North Africa, the Algeria, Egypt, Jordan, Morocco, and Tunisia. From the Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, Ghana, uh, Every Coast, Kenya, Nigeria, Rwanda, Senegal, Tanzania, and students from Uganda are eligible for this Canadian government scholarship. You are not eligible for the scholarship if you already hold or have a pending application for the Canadian citizenship or the permanent residency. If you have already applied, for example, the express entry and you are still waiting for your uh, application results, so you are not eligible for this Canadian government scholarship. If you have already a, any scholarship in Canada by sponsored by their government, so you are also not eligible for this scholarship. You are already enrolled in a degree, diploma or certificate program at a Canadian post-secondary institute. If you are already the part of any post-secondary institute in Canada, you are also not eligible for this government Canadian government scholarship. The second information is a very important information is scholarship value and duration. Uh, so far, undergrads, uh, four months is the award component. The value is 10,200 Canadian dollar. The duration is the four months are one academic term. And there are different activities that uh, you can also here see. Study as research at the college or the undergraduate level, a valid student exchange agreement that waives tuition fees required. If you are looking for an undergraduate scholarship, so in this case, a valid student exchange agreement that waives tuition fees required. Uh, so your host institution in your country, you have to, you can go for this scholarship through exchange program and then that agreement will also give opportunity to uh, waive off your tuition fee. The second award component is the graduate, four months. Uh, the total value is also the same, 10,200 uh, Canadian dollar, four months are the one academic term. In this case, you don't need any exchange agreement uh, between your host institute and the any Canadian uh, institute sponsored by the uh, Canadian government scholarship. And the third component, award component, is the graduate. Uh, if you are looking for, uh, for example, master or PhD, that uh, this duration is a bit longer than the other two components, five to six months. So twelve thousand seven hundred Canadian dollar is the total value. Uh, five to six months is the total duration and. Uh, study or research at the graduate level master and PhD a student exchange agreement is not required so these are the three important scholarship value and duration now we can also get information of the eligible expenses uh, so these amount where I mentioned here in this table in the second column this amount you can use for your visa or study work permit fee 
you can also use for the airfare via the most uh, direct and economical route health insurance yes living expenses you can rent an apartment or accommodation and any utility you can pay your uh, electricity bill gas bill or any other type of bill so you can also utilize these uh, value of uh, scholarship for the different purposes uh, ground transportation including a public transportation pass books and supplies required for their study or research and you can hear there is a uh, five to six points that uh, is giving the information to students if you will win this scholarship so you can use this amount a scholarship amount for different purposes here you can see here in this list uh, canadian institute are eligible to receive 500 uh, canadian dollar per scholarship recipient to aid with the administrative cost once the student arrive in canada yes uh, so also the canadian institutions also providing 500 canadian dollars to their students once they will be in Canada. Uh, then reimbursement of additional employer compliance fee paid to immigration, refugees and citizen Canada in some cases. By further, if you are looking for, uh, further if you will apply for any uh, citizenship in Canada, the immigration, so also uh, the Canadian Institute also uh, um, can receive this amount from the government. The Canadian Institute are also eligible to receive the, these amounts uh, from their government to assist their uh, students. The third part is the application process. Before the application period, Canadian institution interested in hosting students should promote the scholarship to faculty and the staff member, promote the scholarship to eligible partner institution, and explore students exchange agreement with eligible partner institute so these are the three important points before applying you have to make this sure uh, the scholarship you are applying for so they are fulfilling this requirement the non-canadian institution in any country if they are interested to send their students for exchange program to canada so they have to also pay attention to these important uh, different requirements uh, review eligibility requirement I'll explore student exchange agreement with the canadian institution promote this scholarship to students identify students who meet the eligibility and admission requirement for the Canadian partner institution. These requirements are for those non-Canadian institution who want to send their students for exchange program to Canada. These are not for those students who uh, will not sign any exchange uh, uh, agreement, exchange student agreement with the Canadian government. As I mentioned in this table, the second and the third, you don't need any exchange agreement, uh, but for the first, uh, the college uh, undergraduate four months, yes, here, the yes, in the first row, yes, you need. Uh, they are talking about for the first uh, category where the students has to uh, sign agreement with the Canadian universities in order to get the Canadian government scholarship. The third important component in the application process is students interested in studying in Canada under the scholarship should review the eligibility requirement ask your international office if your school has the exchange agreement with a canadian post country institution and contact your international office to learn more about the application process and any admission requirement for the canadian institution uh, so in this case if you are applying by your own you don't want to go for exchange program so this is the simple process you can directly apply for this canadian government scholarship number four the application instruction so here is the the eight different important points you have to follow one by one uh, assign a program coordinator to complete the application in case of if you are looking for exchange program opportunity to canada then you have to contact your coordinator in your university in mean non-canadian institution then he or she will be responsible to apply and fulfill all the requirements and to create an account and every each and everything if you want to apply by your own so uh, you can also find the link in the description uh, create an account you have to simply this is a very simple process i can show how you can create an account this is the step number one you have to uh, agree all the terms and condition just by clicking that this box I, I acknowledge that i have read the statement and agree to its conditions okay please select your account type student researcher or faculty and second option is institution as i explained if you are looking for any exchange program opportunity in canada then your coordinator from your university has to select this second option if you want to apply independently by your own uh, for this government um, 
for this Canadian government scholarship, then you have to uh, choose the first option. So in this case, for example, uh, I am, uh, for example, you are an independent student and you want to apply by your own. So let's check the first option next. And this is a very simple process here. The first option is, is very simple. For example, you are Mr. or Mrs. Uh, or Miss. So you can here select this. Second, the first name, the last name, the email, then choose a password, confirm the password, security question, and security answer. Then register an account. Once you register an account, the email will go into your inbox. So you have to verify the account. Then you have to upload all the important documents. Uh, this Canadian government scholarship is asking for uh, to upload and to submit. After creating account on their website, the third requirement is uh, once you have logged into your account, select the study in Canada scholarship program. Uh, in the for the non Canadian section and click on apply now. So you have to select the study in Canada scholarship program and for non Canadian. Uh, so because you are the non Canadian student, so you have to select this option. And number four is the enter data in the field marked mandatory. I mean, there will be a static or uh, something that is mandatory. You have to you you must fulfill the requirement of the mandatory fields. Uh, number fifth is upload all the required supporting documents. Each document must be smaller than five megabyte, and the different formats are acceptable: uh, PDF, JPG. You can also upload your files in the uh, Word format: uh, .doc or .docx, .txt or .gif. This is the any picture or image extension. So after after uploading, verify the data prior to submission. It, you have to look into it all the information are correctly uploaded and you have filled all the information uh, according to your personal information and other uh, required information so before submission your application you have to make this sure there is no mistake in your application form the second last requirement is click submit you will receive a confirmation message and a reference number uh, for submitted application this reference number is important so you can track your application by using this reference number. Then print the form for your record using the print function in the browser. So control P simple and you can um, also print out and also you can save as a PDF file. The number 50, the supporting document. Once you created an account on their website and then when you will open that portal, then you will uh, get all the information of the supporting documents. Uh, you need the transcript, the diploma, also English proficiency certificate, you need the recommendation letter, and you also need the, uh, for the PhD, the research proposal for the master's study plan. So all these are the supporting documents you need. And the scholarship selection criteria, uh, they evaluate your application based on different components about your uh, ranking submitted by the Canadian institution. Uh, the Canadian institution has already some different ranking for different universities. A strength of linkage to create through the proposed exchange benefit to the Canadian institution. It means your uh, research plan or your um, uh, your purpose of your study. Also, they will also evaluate your recommendation letter. Who provided recommendation letter? So all these are the very important components in order to evaluate your application for this Canadian government scholarship. Uh, number six is the key dates. Uh, the deadline is March 21st, 2023. The notification of result. The scholarship and administrator will communicate successful result to Canadian institution in the spring. Uh, so the administrator will not provide the feedback for the unsuccessful application. So only the successful candidate will be contacted by the scholarship administrator and will provide the further information if you will win these scholarships the the arrival date is august 2023 a fall semester and no later than february 1st 2024 for the winter spring semester so if you will win this scholarship for the fall semester so then you have to report uh, canadian university august 1st 2023 uh, and if you uh, will win the scholarship for the uh, spring semester then you have to uh, report into Canadian University no longer than February 1st, 2020.
Four, students should submit their visa or study work permit application as early as possible to avoid delays. So once you have, you got, uh, once you get the confirmation by the university, so you have to provide the further documents that the university will ask as soon as possible in order to avoid any further delays. Uh, there are some conditions. Uh, students selected for the scholarship agree to engage in full time studies or research as defined by the Canadian institution. So you will be a full time student, full time scholarship student. Uh, abstain from the clinical training or clinically oriented research involving direct patient care. If you will get any uh, medical base or the public health base uh, scholarship, so these are also clinical oriented research requirement or conditions the student has to follow. Focus primarily on the full time studies or the research during your stay in Canada. Yes. As I explained, the full time studies. Uh, so you are not allowed to do work uh, as a part time during your study. A return to your home institution after the scholarship period is to complete your studies. Yeah, this is a very important requirement. Once your study uh, is completed, then you have to go back to your home country unless until if you will apply for a job. So this is the, the next step. Sometimes you have to go back and then you can come back if you will get a job in Canada. Additional information scholarship cannot be deferred and are not renewable. Okay, but there is a particular timeline. So after this, uh, it's uh, not possible to renew your scholarship, uh, either duration and also the, the amount. Scholarship are subject to availability of funding from the government of Canada. So government of Canada is a sponsor body will provide the uh, financial aid or assistance to international students. Scholarships are not taxable. There is no tax. You don't need to pay any tax of, uh, from your scholarship money. Students must return to their home institution after scholarship period to complete. Yes, uh, this, again, this is also they mentioned twice in the condition and also in the additional information. I believe this is a very easy and simple process, but if you have any further queries, so you can leave a comment. So I will respond to your queries as soon as possible. You can also contact the scholarship administrator. The, here is the email ID and the phone number is also mentioned. I hope uh, you understand this process. This is a very simple process and uh, please start working on it and best of luck for the Canadian government scholarship. <music>